Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I needed to make a base for the pan of ice. I'll show you how I did it. Well, the intent is to have this adjustable so that I can get it up just about this high. I want to mount the pan of ice and I want to mount it so it's up about this high. It's still high enough to be able to reach it with, uh, you know, my hand in a neutral position, but it'll get it up close enough that I can see without having to stoop. This is going to be close work. It's not going to be anything where I'm uh, pounding or riveting or drilling in any major components. This is going to be more like uh, filing and dremel work. So I don't need to have the base as strong as some of the other vices that I built. But I do want to have it up high. Because this, you got to remember, drops down like that to do work. And if I have it down here, I'm going to spend my whole time bent over. So I want to have it up in the air. To make that happen, I'm going to mount it on the end of a 2x4. Once again, it's not going to be a lot of side force like I'm planing or doing something like that. This is for light work. I get to use the pencil that Dave made for me. David Chadwick makes these and they are beautiful. I'm not good with metrics, but this looks to be about a four millimeter thread and you can extend it because it's got a, a collet like a drafting pencil. I don't think I want to have it out too far. I don't want to break it. Cool thing is, has a sharpener in this little cap. Very nice. Very nice. This is my nicest saw too. It's a number 12 Distin saw and it cuts beautifully. This one works quite nicely on plywood. It's just a little box saw.
I could have driven that big lag screw down with a nut runner, but it's a lot of work on my wrist. So I picked up the socket and put it in the end of this little three inch throw brace and it runs it right down. Nice and easy. With the big lag screw in the center to hold it down, I'm going to put a couple of small uh, plasterboard screws into the sides of it just so it doesn't spin. Having the tools right there in front of me sure does make it easier to do these jabs.
this ball is in two pieces and it's held together by a bolt right there but that bolt isn't there so I'm going to take this brass screw slip it through there put the washer on it and tighten it up Now it spins freely because this isn't spread out and dragging in the receiver on it. And also when I tighten this up, it doesn't spread these two plates and open it up so that the ball has slop in there. But this bolt's a little bit longer, I gotta cut it off. Now, I once made a mistake of oiling the hinge on the cabinet door. And forever after, that cabinet door swung shut on me. Didn't want it to. If I had left the oil off of it, it would have had enough resistance there that it wouldn't have swung shut. So I'm not going to oil this little ball because I want that to grip. It didn't have to be smooth enough to spin like a top. Just has to be there to hold everything together. There. There you go, Bob. Squeak is gone. And I'm happy because it moves a lot easier. Good and solid. Now, it's not absolutely bulletproof. Even with that tightened up, I'll be able to turn it. But that's not something I'll be doing a lot of. This isn't designed for me to be pounding on it. It's designed for me to hold something in it and work on it. I think this needs a little bit of sanding and some boiled linseed oil. To keep all the sticky stuff off of it. Now we wait. When the blow dries out, I'll have it all ready to go in the morning. I'll put the top on it. We'll be good to go. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.